Hey, it's your Auntie Annie, back with you again with another awesome um, recipe for you. So this week, I was really missing my mom. I was, it's been just over a year since she passed. And, um, you know, I was remembering um, growing up and all the things she would cook and the things that were real comfort to us. And not having her here, I guess it makes me more nostalgic for her and her cooking and all these things. My mom was... She was never defined by just sticking to Jamaican culture. She would go anywhere. She would see a recipe. Uh, she'd want it. She'd eat something and she'd try and then she liked it and then she wanted to do it. So this, this, was, this was a thing with her um, that made her, you know, unique in a way. So for me, one of the things that she used to do on a Sunday or uh, maybe on holidays, she would do it as well was scalloped potatoes. It's a very easy dish. It's really just three main ingredients, which is um, potato, onion, and a cheese sauce. But um, she, of course, being mom, she would make it her own. So I'm gonna go ahead, walk you through all the stuff that we're, we're gonna do, how we're gonna make this. And um, once I have everything assembled, I'll, I'll come back to you. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you what my ingredients are. Um, so for the cheese, these are all the things I'm going to use for my cheese sauce, which is butter, flour. I've gone ahead and used half and half. I'm going to be thinning it out a little bit with some chicken stock, uh, some Dijon mustard, of course the cheese, a little bit of salt and black pepper. So I've gone, uh, for my onions, I've used a large onion. I've just cut it in, uh, try to separate the rings of it. So... It's this, so and also my potato, which I've parboiled, not even fork tender, um, just under that. And then I've gone ahead, put them in the fridge for a little, get them chilled, and I've cut them um, maybe just under a quarter of an inch. So it's going to be a layered dish. So you're going to have like a layer of potato, a layer of onions, then the sauce, cheese sauce, and then layer of potatoes again until you've completed everything. So one of the things I'm gonna start with first, I'm gonna start with and show you how to do the cheese sauce. So as soon as I'm ready to get everything in there and start, I'll come back and, and show you. So let's get this uh, cheese sauce started. So it's the, the pot's heating up, I'm gonna go ahead. So you can use any kind of butter you want in there. It calls, the, the original recipe calls for unsalted butter but unfortunately I didn't have any so I've gone ahead and used the salted one so I'm gonna let the butter um, melt a little bit and then I'm gonna go ahead and add in my garlic so I've gone ahead and mostly I've always liked to uh, grate it because it makes it melt into the recipe better so I'm just going to get this started. So once the butter is melted and the garlic starts to cook down a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and add some flour and what the French call it a roux, but it's really just to help to cook off the flour so the flour is not raw. Once I've done that, then I'm going to go ahead, add a little bit of chicken stock, and then add a little bit of the heavy cream. So I'm just going to let this cook down for about uh, maybe 30 seconds more, and we start adding it. All righty. So I can smell the garlic. So I'm going to go ahead now and add my flour. And you know what? I'm going to just like to take a little bit, maybe add about half of it first in there. So this, this side, as I said, it is, is to help the, the, the mixture and your flour to cook. So I'll just go ahead and add the rest. And you don't want to burn the flour, but you want to make sure it's cooked out. So that, that'll take about a minute or, minute or two. Let's get it going, moving it around in the pot. It doesn't look like much now, but it's just the beginning of your cheese sauce.
Okay, so our flour has been cooked down for about two minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and add my chicken stock here. And this will help to bring a kind of emulsion from the flour. So I'm just gonna mix this through. And this will also ensure that I'm cooking it still, right? And just finish this up. And that's just a cup of uh, chicken stock. Chicken stock broth. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take time. I'm going to take the time to add um the milk you know what i think if i remember right mom used to heat her milk so i might have to uh let's go let's let's just take let's just take a little bit at a time so it takes time to temper it so it doesn't go all um crazy on me Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm, I'm taking my time here. It's not a thing you can rush because you don't want to break the sauce. So you want to be able to take your time and pour the milk in slowly, not all at once. And then when it's ready again, you go ahead. And then I'll taste it um, and add a little salt, black pepper, my little seasoning, and then I'll go ahead and add the cheese to it. Okay, so... That takes care of the milk. Let me grab a spoon quickly so I can taste it. I'm going to just stir it. See, it's a nice. The French calls this a bechamel, I think. Uh, Peru bechamel sauce, I think, once you add. So, mm, so I'll go ahead. I'm going to add just a little bit of dry thyme in there. I'm going to add... A little bit of salt, not a lot because the cheese is pretty salty. So maybe about a quarter teaspoon. Mom also used a little nutmeg and I'll go ahead and put a little bit of that in there. Just maybe about a quarter teaspoon. It helps to enhance the flavor. A little bit of black pepper as well. And we'll go ahead and mix this around. And then we'll go ahead and we'll start to add our cheese. So I have two mixtures here. I have um, a cheddar cheese and I've gone ahead also a creamy Havarti cheese. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some. And it's the same thing like the, the milk. You want to be able to take your time and add the cheese. Not all at once. I'm going to need, also need some cheese for the topping, but I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more cheese at this. So that's coming along nicely. It's nice, nice looking cheese sauce, nice and thick. Just going to go ahead and, and, and have the cheese all melted. So it'll take a few minutes. When I have that done, I'll come back. So um, I'm going to add a tablespoon of Dijon mustard on there. And my, my, my temperature is low because I don't want my sauce to break, my cheese sauce to break. So I have it on medium low. So I'm going to add that mustard. I'm also going to add a little pepper flakes. Mom wouldn't have this, but you know, Annie, your Auntie Annie has to have just a little bit of heat to it. So a few pepper flakes in there. So my cheese is melted now. The sauce is looking good. I've tasted it. Tastes really good. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my fire off. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and get everything ready to assemble. So I'll be back to show you how I've put it in. Oh, I'm going to put it in my dish and get everything ready for you. Let's go. I'm going to start to assemble this. The first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to use some of this Pam spray and spray a little bit, not a lot. You don't want it too, too oily. And I'm grabbing a piece of paper towel and I'm just going to do the sides, make sure it's all, you don't want it too oily, but you want it at least it won't stick. So in assembling it, we're going to be doing this in layers. I'm going to keep stirring my sauce. I don't want it to break on me. So we're going to just go ahead and we're going to put a layer of potato. And it doesn't matter. You don't have to do them in any order or anything. Just I just throw them in. And then we're going to do a layer of onions. And you can just, I don't like that piece, it's too big. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to add, make sure my sauce is okay, just stir it properly. Sauce is still warm. And we're going to go ahead and put a layer in. And then we we'll go ahead again and we start a next layer. So when I've completed the layers and everything, I'll come back and show you when we're ready to go in the oven. So I've preheated my oven at 375. For about half an hour more, I'm going to cook it covered so all the potatoes get cooked all the way through. And then I'm going to go ahead and, um, and put it in. So I'll be back in a few minutes to show you um, when I'm ready to go in the oven. Okay, so I'm just finished the final layering of the extra cheese because who can have too much cheese? And we'll go ahead and just have that. I didn't utilize all my sauce. I still have about maybe, I would think about a quarter cup left. I didn't want it to, it's going to overflow a little bit, but I didn't want it to come all the way. I didn't need any more, any, any more actually. It was good. Let's put a little bit on this piece here. So then I'm going to go ahead, cover it up with foil, and I'm going to cook it for about 40 minutes. And I'll check it once the potatoes are nice and tender. Then I'm going to take it off and then it starts to get some color. So I'm, in order not to make a mess in the oven, I go, I'm going to go ahead and put it in this pan. Make sure it seems on like it. So if, if it does overflow, then it'll be there. So let's go ahead and let's put this in and let's bake. So the whole baking time will be about an hour and maybe 10 minutes or so. So I will come back once I've checked it. It's, it's cooked and I want to just get some color. I'll come back and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead, check on this. It's been cooking for about an hour just under an hour. Whoa, that looks really good. Okay, so the potatoes are cooked. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just go ahead, leave the cover off for about 15 minutes, let it get some more color, and then we'll come back when it's finished. Okay. Mm, wow, this is looking really nice. I've turned up the oven to 400. I'm going to leave it for maybe about 10 minutes more, and then we'll be done. Okay, so this bad boy is done. Ooh, that looks good. Oh, wow, it's piping hot. So here we are. It's all done. And I'm just going to let it sit for a few minutes because... It's actually going to be too, too hot to eat right now. So I'm going to let it set for about 10 minutes before I eat it. But I hope you will uh, try this. Like I said, brings back a lot of nice memories of my mom and what she used to uh, cook for us. So uh, I hope that you will try it. Let me know how it is. But um, make sure you subscribe to, the, to my videos and you go ahead and uh, tell a friend and like each video that you watch. 
So till we see each other again, have a good one.